On this episode of Pedalbox, we're sorting out the fuel system and the fuel tank on the Thunderbird and installing our lovely new, freshly rebuilt master cylinder and brake booster. So we've had a nice big delivery of parts for the Thunderbird, we can start putting this back together again. But first we're going to have to dismantle it just a little bit more. The fuel tank in this is a complete unknown. We've never inspected it and the previous owner didn't look through this or the line either. When he had the engine running he was just doing it off a bottle. So we're going to drop the tank and do a proper inspection and a clean out. We pulled the drain plug and there is some crud on the end of it so that suggests there is probably more crud in the tank. And we don't want to blow that through the lines, into the engine, into the fuel pump etc etc. So pull the tank, clean the lines and see where we get to from there. Well here it is, the fuel tank's out of the car and we've just drained about four gallons of what looks like fine shed grade varnish out of it. It's um, looking pretty healthy on the outside in places but what was inside it definitely isn't too great. Now one thing that we're not able to check unfortunately because it had fuel in it so it's all quite wet in there, we can't really shake it around to see how much rust powder is inside and also because it's quite full of fuel we can't do the same thing that Ed China did in his recent excellent video on refurbing a fuel tank which is just shoving a wet and dry shop vac down in there and sucking it all up. The last thing we want is to get, you know, petrol droplets or vapors or anything going through the motor and potentially catching fire in there. That would suck. So we're taking a slightly unconventional approach here. We've um, put probably a gallon or two of water in here, shaken it all up and around and just drained it out a few times. We're going to do that a few more times to try and get as much out of here as we can and then see what we can figure out from there. Now one thing we're going to do to make our lives a little easier here is we're just going to pop the sender unit out. Now that might need refurbishment anyway, we don't know yet, but also it'll mean we've got two inputs into the tank that we can, you know, shine a light in one and poke our eyes in the other. So we've got the fuel inlet down on the bottom here, where we, uh, where obviously that goes to the filler neck, and this will give us a second place to look into, maybe sort of clean it out from there. So overall the tank is in pretty good condition. It's a little bit rusty on the outside, but we've wiped all of that down with some sandpaper, got rid of all of the crustiness, and we've coated it with some cold galve spray. So hopefully that should stop it rusting any further. And at least we know it holds water still, or at least holds liquid and petrol and water, because it had nearly four gallons of fuel in it, albeit very, very brown and varnishy. So now it's time to turn our attention to the straps that hold them back on, because there's no point putting these back on in this condition. I'm basically just going to do the same as I've done for all of the other bits and just give them a good rub down with a piece of sandpaper. This is actually an 80 grit kind of sanding mesh that goes on the bottom of an orbital sander and just take off all the crustiness. And then once the main roughness is taken off, I can go over it with that phosphoric acid spray again, take off the rust, that will leave a coating behind, prime it, paint it, lacquer it, and we can put it all back on the car. Well, now that we've got the tank cleaned out, the only part left to do is the fuel line. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite as easy to remove as the tank is. You can't just drop it out the bottom of the car quite so casually. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to grab the air line there and our garden hose. We're going to pop the rubber line off of where it enters the fuel pump on this end, blow a bunch of air through it and just kind of see what comes out the other end. in front of me here we've got our nice refurbished fuel tank, refurbished tank straps and brand new shiny metric M10 fastening hooks. So these are actually what hooks into a couple of tabs underneath the body and the straps 
uh, kind of fit over them this little nut that holds the whole thing in place unfortunately we're doing the most cursed thing possible and putting metric fasteners on the back of this car hands are a little bit tied it's kind of tricky to get these things in imperial just kind of around the corner from us on these kind of time scales so we're having to mix the fasteners but to be honest with how really these fuel tanks come out probably not a huge deal tanks looking pretty good i'll be honest it's not exactly what i'd expect if i was going to get a professional refurb done but as usual it's you know sort of time and uh, availability of products here so this has had a nice thin coating of all of our remaining cold galve spray so hopefully as much as it doesn't look great it should be pretty rust pretty well protected against rust by now now with all this in front of us we're pretty much ready to drop this back into the back of the car so uh, let's get cracking So after many weeks of faff and a very quick eventual turnaround by Cardone, this is our new brake booster for the Thunderbird. As you can see, it is meant to be silver rather than the blue that the one that we took off was. But this is all confirmed working, got its tags on, everything. So this is ready to go back in. We can put the master cylinder back on. And we can finally finish off the brake lines. Probably. Let's not maybe get too excited. So that's the booster back on, the master cylinder's back in place, vacuum lines connected. Now we need to do the hard lines that we didn't replace when we put the calipers on because we didn't know exactly what route we were going to have to do and we had to do a bit of research to work out exactly where they needed to go. So from what I can gather, the front brakes go into the little brass diverter block on the end and the line that goes to the rear brakes through the little adjustment valve assembly on the back of the tower comes out the bottom of this particular master cylinder. Now the actual diagram in this shop manual shows a different type of master cylinder that has a screw on lid which only has one outlet and a three-way diverter block onto the end of it. But this is the way I think I've seen, well I have seen this one done so this is the way I think I'm going to do it. I've already done one end which will join the lower of the lower outlet on this master cylinder into the block on the back of the tower that goes to the rear brakes. Now having done one always make sure that you've put the other nut on before you start doing the end because I've done that a few times and had to cut them off again and start over and it is always annoying and it's always miserable having to redo it because you did it wrong or you did it perfectly but forgot to put the nut on. Once you've got it clamped into the vise, you drop the little die into the top and then put the press onto the top of that, hopefully without dropping the handle, which I've done a couple of times. This gets tightened down, just start it off and then make sure that it's nice and square and just run it all the way down till it mushrooms over and you get a properly formed single fold tube. And once that's bottomed out, take the die off and then run the press back down in a second time in order to create a double fold. And that's a double folded flare. So this can now be shaped to fit properly in. I didn't want to bend it up fully beforehand because with the nut where it needs to be, I wasn't going to be able to shape it properly and put that flare on without, with the nut being only about that far down. It's going to make life a lot more difficult. So this is just a fairly cheap set of um, pipe benders. I think these actually came off a wish of all places. Make sure the nut is on the right side of where you're going to put the bend in because, again, that's a massive mistake you don't want to make. You have to do it again and you just fold it round to get the desired arc. Just like that. It doesn't crush the tube and it gives you a nice even bend. Last thing for today before the light goes away completely, it's now about 9 p.m. so we're getting pretty desperately short, is we want to get the fuel neck back in. Now you won't see it on the camera when I do this, but inside this was horribly, horribly crusty and I was pretty sure the minute we put this back in, any agitation, a bunch of it would fall out into our nicely cleaned tank. So I've spent rather too long putting a little lump of steel wool 
down in there and then using our jack handle as a ramrod, just like this. And puking out a load of dust out the other end. Now, unfortunately, it's still spitting out, spitting out dust, but all of the big, horrible crust does seem to be gone. So I think we're fairly safe now to get it back in the car proper. Now, I've also done myself a bit of a favor by leaving all the screws that hold the filler neck in here under the cap. So I now need to remove all of those. Now, this is the easiest filler neck I've ever, ever seen to install. Literally just a straight line like that. You do have to manhandle it a bit to get it into the uh, port on the side of the car. And that finally is our filler neck back in, which means the fuel system is now pretty much complete. We've got the lines look fairly happy from our testing, the filler neck's in, the tank's in, everything's looking pretty happy. The neck was a bit more of a pain to get through the outer orifice here than I expected, but we're all together. I think Age just sort of like leaned on it a bit and everything was fine. But this is all screwed up now, everything's tight. So we can go fill it up with petrol. Petrol. It's actually petrol. And call it a day. Well, that ends another good couple of days work on the Thunderbird. I'm really pleased to have got the fuel tank out and back in with so little faff. That was a, a bit of a problem. I've been reading through the manual, everything we had to remove just didn't look like fun, but actually it dropped out and back in again really, really easily. And it wasn't even in as bad condition as it could have been. The line was pretty clear. The tank had some, some rubbish in it, but it all came out pretty nicely. I think having four gallons of fuel just left in it has actually saved the bottom of the tank from condensation and rust. So uh, we'll call that a win, even if it does look basically like varnish. And not only that, we've actually managed to finish the brake system after all this time with getting the new booster rebuilt and getting all that installed and building up the new hard lines across the front of the car. So that is a really big win. So one step closer to this car actually being able to drive out of the driveway rather than having to be pushed around because it's no fun pushing this. It still weighs a hell of a lot. So that's where we're up to. Next up, we do have to actually take those rear shocks out the back again because I ordered a couple of new ones. Uh, so they've arrived, we can put those into the back of the car now, which is great. Hopefully it won't be quite so wallowy on the back and maybe it'll lift it just a little bit because it is quite squat back there and the front does seem to sit a little bit higher. But that's for next time. We're also gonna get some more uh, new parts put on as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. You can get all of our latest updates, hit the little bell notification and all will be well. You'll see everything that we do as it's uploaded as well as our live streams. And if you want to go to shop.pedalbox.show, you can buy t-shirts for this lovely summer weather. We've got them in stock. We can get them out to you within a couple of days of you ordering them, all being well. So make sure you get your orders in before the sun goes away. I mean, it's probably going to rain again soon now. Probably jinx that. But if you already have your merch, head over to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Our five and ten dollar tiers get access to our Discord and I'm hoping to have some other benefits coming soon as well for those two tiers. So, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we'll have more Thunderbird content coming soon and we'll get some more SD1 content and golf content out on fleet as well as our regular scheduled programming building up the kit car. Thanks very much. <laughs>